You're listening to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. Welcome to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast, where we talk to interesting people and hear stories from this misunderstood, heart-shaped country in Southeast Europe. In this episode, I get to talk to Biljana Lipic, a resident of Cornwall in the United Kingdom, but originally from Sarajevo. Biljana lives on a boat anchored on a Cornish river. And I first found out about Biljana from a story that I stumbled across online. I have to admit that I have always had an interest in narrow boating and living on the water in general. So when I saw that someone from Sarajevo had achieved what was one of my dreams back in the day, I just had to find out more. You're listening to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. Biljana, thank you for taking the time to be with Floaty. I'm going to keep saying this. Uh, being with Floaty today to join us. So welcome. Thank you, David, very much for that introduction. And um, I'm, well, it was it was a, a great surprise when you got in touch with me and uh, the way you you also present yourself as an Englishman in, in Balkans. And um, I just loved the whole, the whole idea and the podcast. And so I'm very, very happy to be here for inviting me. <laughs> Biljana, you arrived in the United Kingdom from Sarajevo a good few decades ago, when the country wasn't in a very, very good place. It might seem obvious to some people, but what actually got you to arrive in the United Kingdom? Yeah, it's a little bit complicated as usual. I was an adventurous person in my mind. I actually really wanted to, at the time, it was like my rite of passage and I needed to leave home. I was, I had enough of, you know, family parents and all that you know the usual the usual stuff so I needed to go and um you know look for for things but I had also I mean the the whole uh situation stuff was you know starting to escalate and I really believe that and and I had spoken English I'd you know I'd already I'd I learned English in school and I went to Malta to a school for English so English wasn't such a big problem I think in um you see like we used to have this big I don't know there was something um about Britain and I always used to kind of imagine it's it's interesting when I was a child um you know I you know the the big stories the writers and you know and all this kind of like the windswept landscape you know and the and the and the wild kind of um you know rocks above the sea and all that um somehow had some kind of a I remember and uh, and London as well as a very multicultural place and and I um I was actually as a child taught uh English as well by by a woman that um actually went to England so she had some stories about it so somehow it you know stayed in my imagination I guess and so I don't think it's it's any wonder that I actually ended up here in the end and even at the far end of it you know it's like far end in Cornwall which um you've just weird and I guess even uh, I have even that fits you know because I I feel very you know sort of I, I always felt a bit odd and a bit weird <laughs> and strange and so um that everything kind of fit. When I was researching about you and you are a lover of the arts you've worked in the arts for so many years. I'll come clean now. Floaty is a boat, and we'll talk about Floaty in a minute. But two things that struck me was somebody from Bosnia and Herzegovina not only living on a boat, but also a very accomplished dancer, a teacher. And the dances that you teach and that you've fallen passionately in love with are not Balkan dances. Well, not as far as I'm aware. So how did you get involved in dance and we'll talk about the boat in just a second thank you for that question i i always loved dance since i was a child and i um danced in sarajevo and i when i actually came to london uh, as as just to answer a little bit more your previous question was like 
I was I actually came as an au pair so that was the way that I came here but I then dance was a way for me to it, it was a resource to not feel alone and you know and and to keep moving and then it's I when I heard tango music I just felt a soul call as I just like I felt a soul call to actually at the time leave Sarajevo I also like when I discovered tango for me spoke very deeply and I later on discovered that that was very much about you know you see tango is an immigrant's dance and so it was created by people who were immigrants from Europe in um, Latin America so I think you know i resonated with that and with those context and in the dance so it just became a continuum for me really of kind of um you know finding my own feet and finding a kind of a place in which i could feel at home and it's interesting that tango is very much you know a story about that and and about a mix that happened and the communication between people who don't necessarily speak the same language so they communicate, you know, in the beginnings in Buenos Aires, they were communicating through movement and through dance in non-verbal ways. And that's how the dance evolved. So I think that was part of my own experience. Even though I spoke English, that was my way of kind of finding my own way into a new culture, but kind of in a, in a kind of like gradual way, I would say. It's, it's just kind of like connecting feeling and and the level of uh, just body and you know so that was very important otherwise just language and the and the very different culture would have made me feel even more isolated or more kind of excluded in a way so tango helped me to belong in a sense yeah i don't dance maybe i should because when you mentioned about you know being an immigrant i identify with all the things you say because I'm an immigrant here. And when you are an immigrant, there are certain insecurities, I think, that you carry with you all the time. Because you've been in Britain now for well over 25, 27 years, do you still carry those immigrant insecurities? Or have you totally, how would I say, absorbed the British way of, of life? It's really interesting because at the very beginning, that's a, a wonderful question. And, and it's very interesting. At the very beginning, I didn't think I had ex insecurities because I think where I come from, well, where you know, from Sarajevo and, and and Yugoslavia, really, you know, because that's what I relate to. That's where I was born, and and um, you know, it's like I because of the whatever socialism and everything, like there was no like we looked at each other in a, in the same way, and so I didn't, I I kind of like I approached everybody like in the same way. And I wasn't really aware for a very long time. I always used to say to people, like, I didn't actually understand that I, like, on a, on a, on a conscious level, that I was being seen as being actually related to as different because of the way that I was relating to people. But then after, like, only many years later, you know, things started to really kind of make sense and I I started to really look in, you know, on a very, oftentimes people on a subtle level, people are always like asking you, oh, where are you from? Or like, oh, you don't sound, you know, very English, you know, and even though that's actually people mean well, they always on some level other you. And beyond that, there is even, you know, there are other other things which kind of like, I think I wanted to switch off because I, I, I didn't, I couldn't face at the time. So yes, I think I only later became more aware of this kind of othering and how that really affected me. And so I'm just, I now, I don't, it doesn't bother me as much because I feel that I've actually really kind of dealt with it in a way or gr I've grown out of it. So I don't know about you, but I don't feel that it affects me anymore like it did when it was kind of unconscious in a way because and then it was like just running the show because I was really feeling it but not wanting to accept it. I can feel those feelings. I feel sometimes it, it is not easy. Like, for example, when people like in Cornwall, people especially are very much like, oh, you know, the immigrants, the Emmets, like, you know, they're, they're very open about like 
not wanting necessarily to accept the people that, that are even just tourists, let alone from another culture. They also don't mean that, like everywhere, like they don't necessarily mean that when they like fall in love with you or whatever. So yeah, I think I, I don't, I think like you, this whole experience of having to integrate two different cultures has broadened my experience. So I'm able to also somehow understand and not take it too personally at times but at other times I'm also able to call on it and I do more and more so and that's helping me in a way because it's giving me a bit of a voice and I don't feel so much like I'm just someone who doesn't have a voice and in that ca case doesn't belong fully. I just laughed so much I tried not to laugh on the microphone when you said the Emmets and <laughs> you've obviously integrated so well with the Cornish people. And for those that have no idea what Biliana <laughs> said, I went to Cornwall many years ago and I was called an Emmet. And at that time they said it wasn't it wasn't a term of endearment. So Biliana, you and I, regardless, <laughs> I, I'm sure. And how do you, I, I mean... Could you tell me as well how how is it in Bosnia? I mean, do you do you have those insecurities? How do you feel there? That's a very interesting question to me. Um, yeah, I think that it is an exciting place to live. For me, it is exciting because over the twenty odd years I've been here, and shame on me that my language skills are pretty pathetic. Every day is an adventure. I find things, I learn things that I think the British may well have had in the dark and distant past. For example, family. I've never felt uh, a whole society, a culture, if you will, that is based on family, where tradition is really pride of place, where hospitality is phenomenal, and where people have, you know, a very good heart. And I used to try and reconcile that with the political reality of the country. And if one does that, you are lost in time and space. So for me, I live in wonder as far as food is concerned, with relationships are concerned. And for a country that is very, very small, has more amazing waterfalls than Germany, Italy, France and Spain put together. I live in a city where there are more coffee bars than there are in Munich. And all these things that people don't know has turned me into a person that, I don't know, just wants to tell everybody about how fantastic it is. But I am an immigrant. I do go into coffee bars and people are really gracious. You can tell that because they immediately come over and speak English. Why did you do that? And the answer is you don't look like us. So... Yeah, I'm not as unique as you because I live in a village and you live on a boat on a river in Cornwall. How the heck, Biliana, did you come to do something that is not commonplace even within British culture? I guess I had to remain weird, you know? I, I I dance on the edges and I recognize a lot what you're saying. It's about living in the moment and living uh, out of like finding pleasure and enjoyment in small things. And I don't know how I ended up here. That is the the the, the, the probably the, the best answer. I um always have had these like it's a pattern in my life. You can see that I've had these moments of sudden just change and that's how I traveled from Sarajevo to to London and then from London suddenly I just had enough <laughs> I love I mean I, I actually must say that I do love you know I spoke earlier about you know some problems but I also have found here you know an immense kind of openness and graciousness you know towards me as well which you know has often been you know, an amazing resource. I always have connected with, you know, with lots of incredible people here. And that has been like my resource. But another thing is that, you know, and, and in London, I, I, I like curiosity, curiosity is something that, you know, drives me. So just the multicultural nature of it and everything was like a full on, like, you know, full experience for me. But then I, it was too much. And it was the, um, yeah, somehow, 
London is actually quite fragmented and and I just said I lost the, the sense of humanity of like I needed just to like what you I think have there as well this thing of like I just on the street and recognize someone and also just like that someone smiles back at me you know that or that I go to the um you know train station and I don't have to travel you know it's like you know two hours each day or whatever you know that walk to the station and you know and you know so I um I think those things and then also nature I I felt I needed more open space and the sea and it was interesting because I feel that the call towards the sea was also what what took me out of actually Bosnia it's funny because I loved I used to love the mountains and it was you know and it was I I just you know I used to ski and go up um I had my grandmother was up in above Sarajevo and everything and I really appreciate all the beautiful rivers and and things in 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 Bosnia but I was you know the sea called me you know and I think that's the first and foremost thing that really I have found in Cornwall that's what I needed to feel and also to a sense that I found actually in Cornwall was that there was a kind of a sense of belonging that there is a culture here that that is kind of in a sense that people are more rooted at the same time I didn't feel that I suddenly kind of had to uh, you know assimilate fully or anything I just had the freedom you know I just felt that I I, I, I had enough space and then you know I um you know it's interesting because I saw this crazy little boat that was actually there is a twin of this boat there's only two of them really in this you know they were made in Plymouth and I saw it in Exeter and I thought when I actually didn't have any money at the time I was like oh wow this is what I want to live in <laughs> and you know a strange thing was obviously I had no idea as well about what living on a boat entails or I wasn't even that wasn't my lifestyle at all you know like I was you know I don't know I was a person dancer or whatever city person and you know that was craving for nature and I came down here and and then the boat life just suddenly called me and then you know i um actually had a tiny bit of money there was no other other you know it's so expensive here whatever so anyway that was my only way i i suddenly remembered that and somehow like not to now take the time but but somehow i managed to then you know living again in a way which is not like any other boating people but the, you know the boating people were also looking at me as strange because this boat is not like any other boat in cornwall as well it's it's a boat that is actually from florida and it's like wide florida uh, rivers and in no wind environments you know where there's not much wind and stuff you know but i loved it it was quirky and it was unusual and it was on water little sense of sanctuary that i needed because after moving so many times I mean in London I moved about nine ten times in what almost 15 years that I lived there you know, and I traveled a lot with my work I became a name you know in this tango world and I even came to Sarajevo to teach tango by the way and in Serbia I actually also helped to start the whole tango scene and this looked like a house and so therefore you know it just gave me the sense of house but at the same time it gives me also the sense that I'm constantly moving which I still am you know and I'm a dancer so I guess I somehow didn't even realize I forgot about this a lot of the memories obviously we I think as an immigrant and you know in that part of the world I forgot a lot of things because I that was my way of continuing continuing on because I not that I forgot they are always somewhere in there but it's like you stop to think about it you know and you just you live in the moment but I think again we can't you know unconscious is a huge force and so I ended up on the bank of the river on a boat in a kind of community which reminds me of some of the best times that I had when I was a child when my father used to send me to his family to the river Tisa and I used to spend my childhood holidays you know out of school over there just bare feet with my family who were like completely living wildly you know any village or anything just kind of like having their own little allotment and their own little boat and my my and my uncle was a, a fisherman and a hunter and it was just this for a child
world it was just this most beautiful you know and fun experience i even then i didn't feel like i belonged because i was like labeled as the city child but i think those memories were really important to me and i think because maybe for me it was a, a little way of recovering about my relationship of the world because I kind of severed it and good memories were important and so I think the way I live now is for me a way to integrate a bit again you know in a good way you know living on the river in this way that reminds me like you know it brings good memories about the place even though I mean nothing is so many issues and problems here <laughs> I will just have to say that you know it's not easy living in communities anywhere and it's full of conflict and all sorts of things and i think that this place and the cornwall definitely and the nature you know has helped me to keep a little bit of that innocence alive and continue to do i'm eternally grateful to this place for that so there you are on floaty it's not very big do you call floaty he or she yes well i had to get used to that it boats are always a she but i it didn't feel like that to me to start with it always felt in between between, you know, because again, in, in, in English, you don't have the serbo croat I'll say it, because that's what, that's what it was then. There is an it, so it's like the child gender, right? So it's not just the male, female, but there's also the child one, which is a third in between. And there are some things that have that. I always related to floaty f at first as that. And now it's sort of big, slowly, it's also very square. So it's not very, I don't know, it's very confusing as usual, but I'm getting used to more to calling it a she okay tell us about floaty what what have you got around you at the moment because you are sat on floaty can you give us a very 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 brief description because i think people are going to be fascinated to hear what you're surrounded by I am sitting on the mud, and at the moment, because the tides uh, has uh, tide has gone out, and where we are, basically, there is twice a day we are on on water and also on the mud. So I'm now sitting on the mud. It's very stable, <laughs> and I am by the quay. It's an old stone wall that was built, I don't know, a very, very long time ago. And I'm right next to it and I can step off onto a grass field. It's a wild side of the river that we're on. It's not a, a boatyard. So we have a bit of a grass uh, the slipway is right in front of me. So I'm looking through a little doorway upstairs. I'm upstairs and where I can't actually fully stand up either. And I, I actually look out onto the slipway where the boats, you know, can launch or get repaired and whatever it's a very old slipway and I can see over in front of me I can see other boats I see other beautiful wooden classical boats because people here are very much into that I'm totally kind of like <laughs> out of the league some of them are in repair and covered there are two keys here so one here and a bit further down there's another one so there's about I don't know maybe about 20 or two families and and few of us are kind of on our own. How many rooms do you have in Floaty? I have upstairs and downstairs and so upstairs is just ah uh, like with the bed and a bit of a space for clothes and I've kind of created a bit of space for my computer and then downstairs is the kitchen and the living area and a small bath. So it's actually really quite spacious for boats. <laughs> I mean, I, I have two floors. <laughs> like I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm a queen. What particular things annoy you about living on the water? And one thing that you really love about living on the water? Okay, I think living on the water, I'll start with the happy one. I don't know why, but I think <laughs> first comes to mind. And um, I think uh, what I love feel more immersed into nature. I feel that I am in the garden of nature is not the other way around. It's not like, oh, nature is on my doorstep. I'm constantly surrounded by what I call the Helford TV because there is a, a, an amount of wilderness and the silence of that as well, that is really important. What annoys me, I guess, of living on the water is maybe the most, I don't know, like if things annoy me but it can get quite hard when it's humid it's wet and you know and so winters can be quite damp and hard in that sense you know 
at night sometimes I don't have enough insulation in this boat even though I'm I'm kind of working on it and I've added some but it's like especially coming from there is I'm used to houses being warm and everything and in, in England in general I have found that houses are not that warm and even now on boat is even worse in that sense when it's cold you know what do you miss the most about either Sarajevo Bosnia Herzegovina or the country that no longer exists Tamara my wife says my country no longer exists what do you miss from either Sarajevo Bosnia Herzegovina or from back in the day when it was Yugoslavia I think a sense of the kind of sense of community and sense of neighborhood and sense of even if it was city and Sarajevo somehow there was no I didn't feel that there was a sense of isolation you know on the in the outside uh there was like we were the play was just i don't know we could play with each other you know like with children and there was i guess there was just a lot a lot more interconnectedness between people i think that's also like a double-edged sword in a way you know being too um close things can backfire but in this part of the world and in the west in general like people almost like they they and again that's me talking you know but sometimes i almost feel that they don't understand what i mean by a, a, an emotional connection that exists in a kind of community and yet i have enjoyed kind of you know discovered as well a sense of space because i'm also a very you know kind of uh, independent person so i i like the sense that people here don't kind of get into each other's pockets you know so there is the space between but I almost feel that you know like the lack of bridging of that space then creates even more and more sense of isolation I believe that it's a it's a consequence of capitalism and whatever and all sorts of you know other things so I see it now but I guess that's what I miss from those times you know you might not wish to answer this question but do you ever see yourself coming back settling here again or not I really don't know it has crossed my there was time and I used to kind of really have a clear no I used to always feel like if here it wasn't because of the people but because like my own feeling like I would go into people's houses and then I would feel I don't feel like sort of like I always feel a bit like like I can't relax you know fully because I'm I'm a stranger I'm someone I'm a visitor or whatever so what I'm trying to say is that you know I feel more at home in myself so therefore there's not such problems that I have and that has changed my relationship to that part of the world as well and so I see myself more able to but whether it really depends on so many other issues I do actually have my father's house that he built it was kind of a, a holiday house and stuff so I still have a part there I am wondering about it I, I'm a little bit circling around because I don't know I don't know the answer. If you were to ask me, would I go back to the United Kingdom? I, I can answer that one in a heartbeat. And the answer with me is really? no. It is no. And maybe one day when I get back to the UK, I'll, I'll jump on that train and come back down and uh, talk to you offline about that. Finally, what is next for Biliana Lipic? I've started a new adventure with film. So I think for me, I am rediscovering again myself as an artist, as kind of translating dance into um, medium of film. It's very risky again at the moment because I'm in the starting, but let's see how it goes. I've already had some successes and momentum. I'm still teaching tango, and um, but it's like I'm opening myself up again a bit to some other adventures. And I would like to actually, I guess, I would would like to be a bit more again like a kind of a global citizen but maybe to remain local yeah stay I, I will stay on the boat for a while I'll be honest every so often I have this thing of like, oh I'm just going to sell the boat and go and go back to you know but go back over there you know so I do have those thoughts and sometimes I can't be dealing with this anymore but I just know that this is the same everywhere so I think yeah I'll see I'll see at the moment I am on the boat and it's sanctuary at the moment the boat and I, co I definitely continue to dance that's my resource and also is what I live off at the moment so so yeah that's 
me. <laughs> Biliana, thank you so much for your time today. Fascinating story. And I hope that the people from the country that follow me on, on, on whatever medium that they catch me might have some comments because I know that different people have different attitudes about the world, but you've made something, you've done something. And I applaud you with your comments about being an immigrant because, yeah, I never could understand an immigrant until all these years that I've been one. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe England's given you some sanctuary. Bosnia taught me tolerance. I also feel that England and this part in the UK has taught me more about me there. So I needed, it's just the way that I needed to go far away in order to start appreciating even more what I came from. That's Biliana Lipic, a tango teacher, artist and filmmaker who lives on a boat. To find out more about Biliana, please do check out the show notes that accompany this podcast. Thanks again for listening. And do leave a review and share with friends or anyone who you think might be interested. Until next time, please do stay safe wherever you are. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you would like to support us and the production of future episodes, then please consider maybe buying us a coffee. The link to do that is in the show notes for this podcast. Thanks again and see you next time.